We're ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you, Minister. Well, good morning and great to be here this morning. Paul Cunningham and John DeCandia from uh, SAFOL for um, Rail Safety Week, an initiative that's been around since 2006, a uh, joint initiative with the ARA and also TrackSafe. Uh, obviously, we know tens of thousands of South Australians uh, utilise our public transport uh, here every day, our uh, trains and our, and our trams. Uh, and you can see them uh, coming through as we speak. Um, trains are obviously very big things and they can creep up on you. So what we're doing during Rail Safety Week is to make sure that we remind people to be attentive, uh, be alert, uh, don't be distracted, uh, because if you are, then it can have fatal consequences. There are 710 uh, railway crossings here in South Australia and 360 pedestrian crossings as well. And in the last year, what we saw was 83 uh, pedestrian and vehicle related collisions. Um, obviously, it's a reminder during Rail Safety Week to make sure you do the right thing when you're catching a tram, when you're catching a train. Uh, because if you don't, obviously, the consequences can be quite fatal. Uh, in Australia as a whole, we've got over 44,000 kilometres of track, the sixth largest network in the world. Um, I also want to uh, thank uh, SAFO for the great work that they do in, in patrolling the areas and also uh, enforcing the law in these areas. So um, I'm here with John DeCandia and also uh, Paul Cunningham, they also might want to say a few words. Thank you, Minister. Uh, SAPO is proud to be a um, partner agency in Rail Safety Week in its 14th year and we have actively participated in each of those years. This year things are a little bit different in relation to COVID-19 but that doesn't mean that we'll still have a strong emphasis on education for those um, that use the rail network but also that drivers that go across tracks in, in their normal day-to-day -day roles on, on the road network. The emphasis is on education. Dur during the week we will be at various locations throughout the metropolitan area, educating people, and we'll also use, as a result of the changes with COVID, a variety of social media platforms to get the messages across. So to keep safe, we want people to stay on the tracks, avoid distractions, follow instructions, and that's when there's signs and when the flashing lights are going on and when boom gates are there, they're there for a reason, and also to encourage others to do so as well and to be safe in the network. Absolutely. Our role is uh, varied. Um, the emphasis is on keeping people safe. If there are crimes that we detect, um, absolutely we will take action. Um, but it's also a good opportunity this week uh, for education to remind people to be safe on the rail network. How many more police officers will you be putting in? We've got an emphasis uh, outlined this week, key locations that we've um, mapped out in relation to where we'll have that emphasis the uh, attention paid to encourage people through education, also through social media platforms and police as we are finding now with COVID in the COVID environment, we do a wide variety of uh, roles but the emphasis is on public safety. What about um, at the moment, how are you finding with keeping people with these pat trams socially distancing as well, that would, would that be also a part of it? Yeah, absolutely. But also, there's, uh, the South Australian community has been fantastic in actually following those instructions from our Chief Public Health Officer. People here in South Australia understand the importance of social distancing and people in the main are doing the right thing. But police absolutely have got a role to play and where possible we will do that. So they've, they've asked for, maybe this might be for the Police Minister one actually, you know, we've seen the TWU last week saying they want mandatory masks trains and transports, what's your view on that? So obviously we follow the health advice and that isn't the health advice at the moment but as that health advice uh, is updated we'll obviously continue to follow that health advice but not at the moment. Um, let me just ask you the question of the Have you heard yes. about that? Yeah, can you just yeah, through I'm, uh, come further into the middle of the yeah. That's Sorry, uh, a pretty nasty crap. Yeah, at about 2.30 this morning at Renmark there was a serious collision. Uh, a 16-year-old male driver and a 24-year-old passenger are in a, um, in a serious condition. It's in the early stages of the investigation. It's too early at this stage to determine as to whether speed or other factors were a contributing factor uh, and also the age of the uh, driver. Um, there's been 59 lives lost. That's 59 different families 
aren't going to have someone around the uh, dinner table at Christmas time compared to 71 last year. 59 lives lost is way too many. Uh, and this investigation in the early stages uh, we will determine the actual causes of that uh, collision at um, Renmark. The police fresh release just says a stolen car. That, that's concerning, I imagine. Look, any uh, whether it's a stolen car, whether it's uh, you know someone's parents' car. It, at the end of the day, it's a vehicle. Anyone getting behind the uh, driver's seat of a vehicle must pay attention. You know, you know it's only a split-second decision and uh, inattention and can have significant uh, consequences. And in this case. Passenger vehicle, like drivers need to be aware that it's not just yourself. Being aware of um, people around you, um, you know, there's no point putting out obituary saying someone was a fantastic person. It's too late. They've lost their lives and they've risked the lives of others and often caused um, the death of other people. And the fact that this is a 16 year old as well, at 16 you can't be the most experienced of drivers. That's right. You know, there's strict. Uh, Yeah, at 16 you certainly don't have the level of experience uh, of older drivers, more experienced drivers, but that's not to say that older experienced drivers don't need to pay attention on the roads as well. But certainly at 16 uh, it does highlight even greater attention that needs to be given behind the wheel of a motor vehicle. Where is Sapol at in relation to the police officer that was assaulted last week in Elizabeth At Elizabeth Downs. So last Thursday night at the Elizabeth Downs service station, our Members from Northern District, District Policing Teams, uh, approached a vehicle that um, brought their attention. Uh, as they went to the uh, driver's door, which was open, there was a struggle with the vehicle. Um, the driver of that vehicle reversed about 10 to 15 metres and dragged the police officer along for that distance. Very fortunately that the uh, member wasn't uh, more seriously injured. Um, fortunately, Northern District CIB uh, undertook an investigation immediately and by Friday night a uh, male person was arrested and he'll be appearing in court today. Okay, thank you ladies and gentlemen.